Hello and welcome to Recyclist. I'm your host, Eric Provost, and I'm being joined today by a very special guest. Please help me welcome to the show right now, a partner with Global NRG Advisory, Chris Negus. Sir, thank you so much for joining me today. Eric, thank you very much for your time. Delighted to be on the podcast for the interview. Awesome. Well, thank you very much again, sir. And for those who may not be aware, what is Global NRG Advisory? And specifically, I do really enjoy, I love a good play on words. It's not Global Energy, it's Global NRG, correct? Yes, that, that is correct. So um, we are a specialist uh, renewable energy financial advisory and as of July 10th, a developer of uh, specifically RNG projects in the UK and the US. Um, yet the NRG was picked up. My surname is Negus. My business partner's surname is Rice. So it's actually Negus Rice Group, but it also plays nicely onto NR- energy as well. Nice. So I wondered if it actually stood for something. That's really clever. I really appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> so when did uh, Global Energy Advisory start out? Like, what are you guys? Really? Yes, yeah, certainly. So um, we started out in February 2023. Uh, we've come out of the UK's largest RNG fund, uh, where I was head of commercial and my business partner was head of relationship management. And between us, we have developed and funded over $215 million worth of RNG projects in the UK. Um, and we were looking to launch into the US. And when the fund decided they didn't want to do it, we took our business plan that had taken three and a half years and said, we'll go and do it ourselves. So that's what's led us to where we are today. Nice. Uh, When it comes to any type of signature projects, what are some of the ones that really stand out for you that you guys have already helped develop? Yeah, certainly. So we've developed some of the largest uh, food waste projects in the UK, which has been fantastic. We're currently closing on uh, two of the first projects in the UK that will have integrated carbon capture on them and producing liquid fired CO2. And then I think for us, the real standout project is the one that we're starting the development on in Louisville, Kentucky, um, based around the bourbon industry, you know, <laughs> what's yeah. better than renew- re- renewable gas and bourbon. You know, I think that's what our signature, our signature cocktail, shall we say is. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. I mean, they, they certainly enjoy their bourbon in, in Kentucky. I can vouch for that. Um, <laughs> but uh, just a couple questions before we really get into to the RNG <laughs> side of things. You know, obviously you help, you've stood up a lot of these projects and there's a lot of people out there, you know, with the, the explosion of renewable natural gas and renewable energy in general. I'm sure there's a lot of people out there wondering about starting up their own and uh, just kind of asking for them. I do wonder what are some of the things that people may not realize are going to be big considerations when you decide to take that step, when you decide to uh, to really commit to a renewable energy project like that? Yes, yeah, certainly. I think for us, we fall into four key areas. One is site security. Um, one is feedstock and having that tied up on a longer term contract as possible. And the third would be competent technology providers. So people that have done it before and have a track record that you can point to that is successful. And then the fourth is competent operations. Uh, one thing I'm a big advocate for is uh, professional companies coming in to operate these assets because they're, they're not easy. They're not simple. There's a lot of science behind it. And I would really encourage dairies you know farms uh commercial waste producers to engage in a professional company to do it as opposed to try and take a stab at doing it yourselves yeah 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 and what do you think are some of the the most kind of omnipresent some of the biggest challenges that uh, you wind up often facing when it comes to uh, a lot of these projects well, I think at the moment, the biggest thing is chasing the ITC. Uh, obviously, that's got a deadline of the 31st of December this year on it. Where it's unclear whether that will be extended into 2025. Um, so chasing that deadline is getting ever increasingly hard um, and therefore hitting the required internal rates of returns for funds, especially in the US, is is challenging. However, one angle that we bring Uh, which is slightly different, is the amount of London-based funds and money that we have access to that want to play in the US market where we can feasibly hit an IRR of 11 
percent plus and they are more than happy to to see that sort of number so i think the biggest challenge is hitting those rates of returns but i think we've got a unique play where we can help bring some of these projects alive still uh can you expand on the uh, on that uh, having that unique play yeah certainly so uh, where we sit both sides of the atlantic so we've got our uk entity uh, where i'm speaking to you from now mm-hmm. but we have a uh, US, a Delaware registered corporation with a team in Tampa and a team in Minneapolis. Um, Where we speak to US funds, they have a certain rate of return that they need to hit. We've got a number of UK parties that we work with that actually want to invest in the American RNG sector, but their hurdle rates are substantially lower because hitting them in the UK market is, is challenging. Um, so anything, whereas some US funders want high teens to 20%, a couple of the London-based ones that we work with are looking at like 11 12%. So it opens up um, that, sort of mar- that sort of lifeline for some of these RNG projects, even without the ITC. Yeah, a little bit bigger margin of error. Correct. Yeah. Uh, but going into like the RNG projects proper in this, this platform, because one of the reasons I wanted to bring you on the show is, Mm. um, this entire new arm of the business that you just created recently. As a matter of fact, I Mm. talked about it on, uh, Recyclist just last week, uh, that there is, uh, like an entire new platform now at the company focused exclusively on renewable energy projects, correct? That that's correct, Eric, and specifically in the U.S. market as well. And obviously, we've been talking a little about a uh, little bit about uh, renewable natural gas already. When it comes to the renewable energy projects, is that the main focus of that platform? Are you guys looking at wind or solar, or or is it basically just RNG all the way? RNG is going to be our primary focus. However, as you noted with the platform, we termed it as renewable. So it does leave us open to be able to do wind, solar, hydrogen, you know, sustainable aviation fuel in the future. But I think for our initial uh, grounding, it will be RNG. And um, uh, in addition to announcing this whole new platform, you announced it kind of in tandem with this project. You've already touched on very quickly this project in Louisville, Kentucky. What can you tell us about this uh, first initiative for the new uh, area of the business? Yeah, you know, it's a it's a well sized project. We're going to be producing uh, just over four hundred thousand MMBTUs of RNG per annum, as well as capturing. Oh, just <laughs> just <laughs> um, start small, and we'll be capturing over seventeen and a half thousand tons of CO two as well that will either go into the food and beverage sector or be sequestered into uh, some of the old coal mines etc around around the area so we're quite excited about the massive impact that this will have as a first project um, we'll also be helping the bourbon industry dispose of 105 million gallons uh, per annum of thick stillage in a, in a sustainable manner as well so we're we're really quite excited about how this helps not only us as a business, but the the wider impact it has on the state of Kentucky and hopefully the uh, bourbon and beverage sectors in in the United States. So th- this is incredibly interesting to me because I think when a lot of people think about RNG renewable natural gas, they think about where it comes from. Obviously, landfills are going to be one of the first things that people think of. Uh, you know, manure, dairy farms, you know, things like that. But you guys are actually generating RNG from bourbon? Essentially, yes. So the the mash that's left after producing bourbon. And we'll ah, be okay. taking that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not I'm not burning good bourbon, Eric. Don't worry on that. <laughs> um, so no, we'll be taking it from the, the, the waste product from producing bourbon. Um, our platform is centered around uh, pre-consumer food waste, so coming out of factories, etc., uh, and then beverage waste from the bourbon industry, wineries, breweries, anywhere that's left with a, a waste that either at the moment gets discharged to, our, to the sewers or goes to landfill. We would like to take that and give it an extra lease of life to produce. I mean, you think about it. Energy. Yeah, you think about it. It does just kind of make perfect 
sense. I mean, at least for, you know, a lay person like me, you think about the the process that creates alcohol and obviously the fermentation, there's obviously already a lot of gas involved. So you have the waste product, the mash that you're talking about that, yeah, I mean, it's just primed. I assume that getting it to release more gas is not a difficult uh, task. So mm-hmm. that, but that's really, really interesting to me that you guys are continuing to think about different venues, continuing to think about different areas and different you know, mediums really that you can generate RNG from. And I think the, the, the bourbon aspect, uh, the, the mash aspect is something that, you know, maybe a, a lot of people can start looking into themselves. And obviously when it comes to America specifically, America is a very alcohol rich country. Uh, is that something that you guys are going to kind of continue to pursue as you expand further into the U S look at other you know, hard alcohol plants or maybe even beer plants or, you know, potentially partnering with people like Anheuser-Busch or, or, or other companies like that? Yeah, that, that is certainly the play here, Eric. I mean, first of all, I don't want too many people looking at the bourbon industry just yet. Um, fair enough, fair enough. I apologize. <laughs> Nobody look at the bourbon industry. Nobody look at the bourbon industry. I'm sorry. Give, it, give us a year, 18 months, then people can start looking at it. Um, but yes, in answer to your question, certainly other hard alcohol industries, breweries, the, the great thing with the brewery sector as well as the CO2 that we can capture can then be recirculated back into the process for the beer. You know, there's a yeah. quite, uh, well-established uh, distillery, and distillery, sorry, brewery in the UK that takes co2 produced from a digester plant to for their beer production you know it's if we're using the beer grain it's not like we're generating co2 from a manure you're actually generating it from the produce that's made that beer in the first place so it brings in a real sort of nice circular economy story to it as well that's really interesting that's really cool and i you know i've certainly been to to plenty of restaurants, you know, especially being situated in the Southern United States, there's a lot of, you know, small business restaurants that also do their own brewing that do their, their own distilling. It may Mm -hmm. certainly not be as big as a a factory or something, but to, for, for all the, you know, thousands and thousands of small business, you know, kind of personal distilleries and personal breweries out there that could potentially be looking at a way to to save on their energy. I think that that might also be a venue you guys could explore. Absolutely, Eric. You know, our mantra is that no distillery or brewery is too small because at the at the plant that we're developing, we will have mixing tanks that we can blend in all of those different recipes. So it it makes the uh, the bacteria happy that are in the they're in the tanks. Now, I assume, I assume all this mash uh, is one hundred percent completely done. Not going to be part of the beer maker, or the the alcohol making process uh, anymore. I assume this is all just pure waste that you guys are using. That is correct, Eric. So yes, it's a hundred percent waste that currently they're either having to pay to send to landfills or pay discharge licenses to go to the to the sewers. So. Um, we're looking to take that and say, look, this is a waste product. It's no more use to us, but it's a great use to us. Great, uh, no use to you, but great use to us. Yeah, I, w- I was going to initially ask you because when it comes to the RNG sector, uh, you know, obviously a lot of people are seeing opportunity, and I was going to pose the question to you: what type of opportunity did you see? But you know, you're kind of expanding into the U.S. with a focus on, you know, RNG based on alcohol producing or formerly alcohol fermented mash, I'd, that that feels like something that uh, kind of writes itself uh, at this point. Do you guys, is there anything outside of that? I know you said this is kind of the, the, the big focus for the company, but do you guys have any other projects in the works, more kind of traditional RNG landfills or dairy farms or anything like that that you guys are speaking to? Uh, the honest answer, Eric, is, is no. We're mm-hmm. focusing more on this sort of food waste, pre-consumer food waste aspect of it. Um, we've got a great relationship with a Spanish company that is looking to retrofit onto landfills to strip the organics out of it, especially useful in California with the recent state legislation. So that is something we're exp- we're exploring and expanding upon. Um but no, we're not really looking at dairies. That's not to say that we never would, but I think um, yeah. some of the some of the contractual stuff that we've got in place at the moment 
costs us more going towards D5 RINs uh, than the D3 market. And really what attracted us to the US market in the first place is even with the historically low LCFS prices and, and RIN prices, it's still one and a half, two times better than the UK market in terms of returns. So it's um, a much more profitable market for us to be in. Plus, I enjoy coming over to the US, so that's another <laughs> another driver. <drive-off. laughs> Where's your favorite place to visit in the US? Oh, see, I think Boston's up there probably is my uh, my favorite. I'm a Red Sox fan, so apologies to any listeners that uh, oh wow. Like um, oh. I'm maybe get, I shouldn't have asked got, you that because maybe you just closed off the entire New York market to yourself. <laughs> and there's a funny story there for another time, I think, Eric. Uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> so I grew up in, in Cambridge in the UK and Boston's got a very similar sort of relaxed uh, feel to it. So, yeah, I think that's probably up there with my favorite places. Wonderful. Well, there's certainly a lot of breweries over in Boston, so I'm sure a lot of those guys are probably listening and, and uh, you know, hopefully looking to take advantage of their own mash and looking to take advantage of uh, the extra energy and the extra profit that they can probably generate on top of the alcohol that they're already making. So, like, what do you see in this space as the future? Do you feel like this is a, a real, true, untapped gold mine, or do you just see it as you know, uh, at least a significant enough opportunity that nobody's capitalizing on yet. Yeah, certainly. When we, before we launched the development arm, we did our market research and currently there are only 61 food waste um, RNG plants in the US. So we think there is a significant amount of growth there. And we're not saying that we want to be the only people in Mm -hmm. that sector, but we certainly want to be the people that we're thought of first. Um, I think there is still a long way to run on RNG production, especially in the US. Um, I think we need to look at other ways of utilizing the RNG. Great putting in the pipeline, but is there anything we can do with sustainable aviation fuel or production of other um, other key materials that we need? Um, you know, we're working with a company in the UK that can take RNG and make it into graphene and hydrogen. Is that something we should be exploring more? But I think that's further down the evolutionary curve for us as a company at the moment. We want to make sure that we're still doing our, our standard RNG plants correctly first before we get too carried away with other future plans. Of course, of course. And uh, while this branch, this newly you know kind of formed branch of the company is, is going down that route, you know how how much are you guys splitting the the task force here? What do you what else are you guys kind of working on through the global NRG advisory brand as you're pursuing this? Yeah, certainly. So we're advising on two dairy based projects in Indiana at the moment. Um, mm-hmm. So that's really taking up a lot of the the non uh, development side of things. Uh, what else are we working on? We're we've got three projects in Canada that we're looking at. And then four in the UK. So we're quite spread out across both sides of the Atlantic currently. And, you know, the US is certainly a big place. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of opportunity there. Are there there any other countries that you're looking to or is, you know, (laughs) is the US kind of enough right now? I think you've, yeah, you've answered the question there for us, Eric. The US is enough for us right now. (laughs) <laughs> so many breweries in, in the u.s we're just going to focus on that for right now fair enough uh yeah. but for anybody who has their gears turning for anybody who's thinking is like well there's certainly an opportunity there maybe i should reach out to this chris guy at global nrg advisory how can they do that uh, best place is probably on linkedin just look us up and it's chris uh, negus or my email is chris at globalnrgadvisory.co.uk. Yeah, and that is Negus, N-E-G-U-S, correct? That's correct. Wonderful. Uh, Chris, thank you so much for coming on again. This has been super, super interesting. Uh, again, you know, we continue to hear about RNG. We continue to hear about projects like these renewable natural gas projects coming from really new and unique places. And I think especially for an American market, this is going to, uh, I think this is going to perk a lot of ears up. So I'll be very interested to see how this particular 
field of the market expands in the future. And I'm sure we'll be seeing Global NRG's name quite a bit over the next few years. But once again, there, uh, sir, thank you so much for joining me today and uh, expanding on this really unique aspect, this really unique new initiative that you guys have going on. Thank you very much for having me, Eric. Delighted to be on here today and uh, look forward to seeing you in Louisville when we can host you around the site and maybe do a, a live podcast from there. Absolutely. I would love to do that. That would be amazing. Uh, but guys, thank you so much for listening to Recyclist, which is, of course, a registered trademark of Diamond Scientific. You can reach out to them at diamondsci.com. That's diamondsci.com. Or you can call them at 321 321- Two two three seven five zero zero. Thank you so much for tuning in to this week's episode of Recyclist. I've been your host, Eric Provost, and we will see you next time. Thank you.